Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing today? Hallelujah. How many know that God is able to do exactly what he said he was going to do? He's going to fulfill every promise, everything that he said he was going to do. We're just going to sing about that a little bit today. Go ahead, Justice, help me out. Cause he won't give up on you. 
Let's sing it one more time. Don't give up. Don't give up on God because he won't give up. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know he's able, come on, stand to your feet and let's just worship the Lord this morning. Come on, we serve an able God. We serve a God that is able to do exceedingly above all that we ask or think of him. Come on, lift your voice. We come to bless him. We come to glorify him. We come to magnify him. Oh my God, he is so able. He's able, he's able. He's able to fix. He's able to restore. He's able to give back. He's able to bless. He's able to make a way out of no way. Hallelujah. Oh God, we thank you for being an able God. And as we pray this morning, Father, we thank you. We thank you, God, for this day that you have made. God, we come in your presence with rejoicing and thanksgiving in our heart. Father, we thank you, God, that you're an able God, that you're able to turn things around. What the enemy meant for our evil, God, you were able to turn it around for our good. What the doctor deemed is our deathbed, God, you gave us life, God. You healed, you set free, you delivered. God, you made ways out of no way because that's how able you are. And so, God, as we come on today, Lord, giving you praise, giving you glory for all the things that you have done. Father, we pray now this morning to move in this service. Have thine own way, God. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh, God, that somebody will come to know you in the pardons of their sin. Oh, God, we pray, God, for the message bearer on this morning. That, God, that you will touch the word, Father, that it will fall on good ground. Father, we pray for those who are on their way and those who are online. And, Father, even those who have no desire, that, God, you will continue to reach them right where they are. Oh God, we pray for the sick and shut in. We pray for Pastor Dawn this morning, God, that you give her continued healing upon her body now from the crown of her head down to the soles of her feet. Oh God, we pray for restoration in this house. Meet every need in Living Grace Worship Cathedral that God will continue to be a beacon of light, a beacon of hope, a beacon of restoration for a dying generation that some lost soul, God, will come and give their life to you. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We plead the blood of Jesus. We come against Satan that is attacking our home. We come against Satan that is attacking our health. We come against Satan that's attacking our family. We come against Satan that's attacking our wealth. We plead the blood right now in the name of Jesus. Loose your hold, Satan. Loose your hold, Satan. Set God's children free in the name of Jesus. And God, we speak victory. We speak victory. We speak victory this morning. Yes, God. We speak victory over every obstacle. We speak victory over every challenge. We speak victory over every sickness. We speak victory over every disease. We speak victory over every problem. We speak victory this morning because who the Son set free is free indeed. And God, we have victory. We thank you, God, that we have victory today. Look upon your manservant. Touch me, God. I thank you, God, for what you've done in my life and what you continue to do. As I lead God's people, God, continue to lead me. And God, we're always careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. If you know God is able, come on, lift your hands and lift your voice and begin this to tell the Lord, thank you for being such an able God. Come on, hallelujah. You stay right there in that atmosphere of worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This offer of his praise. Woo! Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name, God. You're a wonderful God. A merciful God. Everlasting God.
Everybody join me and help me say hallelujah.
How many have victory this morning? Come on, how many have victory this morning? How many has victory this morning? You might have came in feeling defeated, but now you feel empowered. You feel encouraged. You feel uplifted. Come on, can we do that one more time? Come on, death couldn't hold us down. We have victory over this. You have victory over that. I'm so grateful we got Take this time to acknowledge all of those who are on Facebook Live and also YouTube Live. If you're a first-time viewer, just send us some hearts, send us a message. Um, we want to connect with you. Are there any first-time worshipers here in the building? First-timers? Put your hands, first-timers. Everybody's returning. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good to see everyone. Pastor Dawn is absent. Keep her in your prayers. She's been dealing with chronic pain in her body and as the weather sometimes shifts as it is kind of gloomy outside, she feels um, that pain. And I said, I got your back. You just relax. I'll go do what we do. Amen. But just continue to pray for her. And when you see her around here, sometimes the mind is willing, but the flesh is weak. Amen. Don't let her do too much. Just, ah, put that down. Um, 
as we continue to ask God for continue and complete healing, amen, in her body. Listen, a couple um, quick announcements and a couple acknowledgments, and then I'm going to get out of your way. Today is Compassion Sunday, amen, Compassion Sunday. For those who were here last week, amen, yeah, amen, amen, today is Compassion Sunday. We have compassion. Um, Living Grace Worship Cathedral and also United Covenant Churches of Christ, where I serve on the general board under the leadership of our presiding bishop, Bishop Glenny Livingston. The United Covenant Churches of Christ is in partnership with Compassion International. It's an organization that I had the privilege and the opportunity to travel with to Ecuador. And they have children all over the continental U.S., nationally and internationally. And we minister to these children and their families. We make sure that they have all the the necessities and the necessary items that they need to sustain in life. How many know that because we live here in the land of the free in the United States, it's not like that everywhere? Hello? Amen. Amen. I'm getting ready to travel in the next uh, uh, month month from now to Accra, Ghana, and over there, education is not free, and the families do not have the money or the resources to send their children to school. Their children don't go out of, don't go to school, and many of the young ladies are forced into prostitution. Come on, somebody, and not just in Africa, but throughout this world. And so, organizations like Compassion International, United Covenant Churches of Christ, and Living Grace Worship Cathedral always advocate not just here in Middletown or in the state of Delaware or in the United States, but we also advocate for the voiceless in other countries. And so today is Compassion Sunday. We have information. There's no pressure. If there's anyone who would like to, you know, I don't, I don't like to use the word adopt. I like to use the word is it. Um, uh, what word I want to use? Just accept this child into your your family. Accept this child into your life. Accept this child into your ministry because we all have a ministry. Amen. Amen. Some have a ministry to preach and teach the gospel, but some have a ministry of evangelism. Some have a ministry of compassion. You're driving and you see someone that is in need and they touched your heart and you turned around and made sure that they had food or water or resources. That's the ministry of compassion. Amen. And so that's what we are about here at Living Grace Worship Cathedral, a ministry of compassion. Nothing Nothing comes back to this church. We don't collect anything off of this. It's just information that we're sharing um, with each and every one of you. This is James. He says, hi, my name is James, and he lives in Haiti. We have a church in Haiti that is a part of United Covenant Churches of Christ, and Haiti is in uproar. I had a privilege and opportunity to travel to Haiti right after the last devastation earthquake that happened there in Haiti. I was in Port-au-Prince. I was in Tent City. I was in the gutter of the gutter where people had died and families um, have lost their loved ones and their capital. I don't know if many of y'all remember that. It was back maybe about a good 10 years ago. Their capital was split down the middle. And I stayed out there for two weeks with the American Baptist churches on a mission trip. And we was able to provide food and water and, and all the resources that they needed. Their hospitals do not look like our hospitals. Their hospitals are concrete slab without windows. Their IVs are not in plastic containers. They're in glass bottles. Their families do not, this is what I've seen and experienced. It's not something that I read. I saw this firsthand. Families do not have a dietitian that's walking down the hallway asking, would you like chicken or beef or fish? Uh, put your order in. If families do not bring their loved one's meal to the hospital, they don't eat. This is the reality of the world. And right now, Haiti is in a very oppressed place right now where they lost fully control of their government and their military. And it's sort of like some of the other third world countries where you have these um, supreme gangsters that are like taking over and uh, running um, their country and robbing and and stealing and killing and, and forcing children into slave trade and sex trade. This is the reality of the world. Hello? Amen. So because we live in a great community and and you have your sons and your daughters, it's not like that everywhere. 
So this is James, and he lives in Haiti. His birthday is May 20th. He was born in 2016. He's a child that could use our support. A very small seed that you can support James and help his life. James is a real person. This is not someone who just took a picture of a child and put it there. You have ability to develop a relationship. We did this before, and many of us were able to go and see the children that we had adopted in Ecuador, and we were able to still have these relationships and support with them. I think I said enough, but I just want to just put this out there. If you're interested in James and having James and having compassion for James and having James become a part of your family, you can see me. I have 19 other children that are in my office. After service, you can see me because I have to make sure that you get the right information that you can follow your child that you are now accepting, not adopting, accepting into your heart, accepting into your family so that they can have a better way of life. Amen. 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 Listen, just another quick announcement on September 7th. September 7th is actually the first Wednesday that we were due to come back for Bible study. I will be ministering out um, at St. Mark's Cathedral in Chester, PA, Bishop Anthony Hannah's church for his church anniversary. And so there will be a sign up sheet out on next Sunday asking praise team musicians and those who are available to um, travel with us on September 7th as we travel to Chester, Pennsylvania to celebrate Bishop Anthony Hanna and his church anniversary. Amen. I um, want to wish everyone a very happy Labor Day. Amen. As we get ready to come up on Labor Day on this um, coming week. And also, first Sunday, next Sunday, last Sunday, we had a, a, a water leak in the building. One of our AC units had broken. Water had drained down and, and uh, saturated the partial of the sanctuary. And so we could not have service on last uh, first Sunday of, of August. So on this coming Sunday is Communion Sunday. So I'm asking everybody to be out, be in your place, leaders, as we have Holy Communion. And also, it's my birthday. Woo! Yep, I'm a September baby. Amen. The Lord has blessed me. Amen. To see 48 years amen on this earth and so on next sunday is my birthday come hang out with me amen i'm off of vacation i'm back to work amen praise god all right crystal you're clapping a little too hard up there amen i'm back on next sunday and i'm excited because there is a word from the lord and so invite somebody to come out and celebrate with us on next sunday listen um, as we get ready to move on into service, as I stated, uh, I am on vacation. I want to do some acknowledgement. I see our state rep is in the house. My sister in love. Amen. Sister Sheree Moore. Amen. Is here. Is that your mom next to you? Bless you, mom. Amen. Good to see you. And her son. Amen. To God be all the glory. Thank you for worshiping um, with us on today. Listen. This sister right here, y'all, trust me when I say what I say. And y'all know I'm a real person. She is bad. Amen. In a good way. She is concerned about our community. She's concerned about your family. But most importantly, she's concerned about your children. Amen. She's an educator. She's educated. Amen. And she is making a significant impact and a difference in the state of Delaware. Can we just honor her one more time? Amen. For state representative. Amen. Sheree Moore for being here with us. Listen, she's here. Talk to her. Get her information. There's an election coming up, and we got to keep the sister in the seat. Amen, somebody. Amen. Listen, I came up 36 votes short. I'm going to make sure she has everything she needs to have in this next coming election and this redistricting that we have um, here in our state. So, Sheree, we're here to support you. You have our support. We love you. We salute you. Amen. And at the end of the service, you want to come and say hello? You're more than welcome to come and say hello, but no pressure. Amen. I didn't know she was coming, so this wasn't planned, y'all. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad that she's here. We have another representative, Councilman Andre Bogarty is here. Amen. From the Dover District. Amen. He's our Dover councilman he's a preacher teacher he is a brother and he is a friend 
and he is definitely used by God. And so he is our word bearer of today. He's going to come and minister to our hearts and our souls on this morning. Is that all right? Amen. Every teacher is a student. I want you to get that. Every teacher is a student. And me being a teacher of the gospel, sometimes iron sharpens iron. I need to sit in that chair right there. I need to sit there and allow God to minister to me. Because you have to understand, pastors, right, Elder Linda? We pour out. We're pour out. We're constantly preaching. We're constantly teaching. And we never have the ability to have someone pour back into us. And that's when the enemy uses that as his defense. And mental illness amongst the clergy is on a rise. Because we're dealing with pandemic. We're dealing with COVID. We're dealing with oppressed situations, sickness and disease and every now and then a pastor needs to sit him or herself down you don't have to wait till somebody sit you down or God to put you down but you have to have enough wisdom and enough knowledge to say you know what I need to sit down because every teacher is a student of the gospel and so we I sit today so I can be fed I can be empowered I can be encouraged, I can be restored, and I can be renewed. And so we're going to ask Justice that's doing a wonderful job. Amen. Big up to her. Today is our youth Sunday. Amen. Today is our youth Sunday. And we honor the Lord for Justice being one of our youth and also one of our ambassadors that's doing a phenomenal job. Amen. Standing solo because our other praise and worship leaders are on vacation. Amen. So thank you, Justice. We love you. Amen. You're doing a phenomenal job. To the greatest band, thank y'all always for doing what y'all do. Amen. And so um, I'm going to have her come, and she's going to, to sing, and, and we're going to receive the word. And then after that, we're praying, amen, for our young people, those who are returning back to school. If you're a staff, if you're a teacher, amen, if you're a student, I have oil for you. And I want to pass this oil out for you so that you can anoint yourself and anoint, amen, your family every day so that we can keep the covering of God's protection upon our staff and our students. Amen. Amen. But listen, before we come, can we pray for this man of God and just stretch your hand in Elder Andre's direction and just say, Lord, use Elder Andre to preach the gospel. Touch him now to minister to us that we may leave here differently than the way we came in Jesus name amen and amen
Did I have a song? That one right there did it. Yeah, that's a, as my kids say, that's a bop. <laughs> Come on, a little bit more of that, a little bit more of that. I will not. Searched all over, couldn't, couldn't find, find nobody. nobody. I searched high, I searched, searched high. high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Excited to be back home again, a second home, a third home. Have a seat, have a seat. I promise you, I'm not as formal as I probably should be, or probably will be <laughs> in the future. Some of you know me. My name is Andre, Elder Andre, whatever you want to call me. I'm cool with it. My mama called me Andre, and as long as I come or answer the phone when she call, that's the only. That's all that matters. I'll be 50 years old and she still, still think I'm supposed to come turn off her light all the way from Delaware to Detroit. Y'all don't know nothing about that. And your mother called you in the house to turn off the light. Well, I ain't know that she, she just wanted to know where you was. You know what I mean? I just wanted to know where you was, mom. And I'm running thinking it was something important. So, so with that said, I'm just Elder Andre. I bring you greetings from two places. I bring you greetings from my home pastor, Crossroad Christian Church, uh, pastors Anthony and Margot Wallace, and my church, my other family church, the Well Church, um, currently under the leadership of Bishop Carol Harris, and I'm super excited to be here. Now, I warn you all, I warn you all, I warn you all, I had to do a eulogy last yesterday, and they only gave me 15 minutes, and I told them, I said, I got to preach tomorrow, so y'all got to, I got to make up my time. Yeah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, when there's, there's, there are things that happen in life, I don't believe in happenstance or coincidences, but, you know, in certain seasons of life, God makes you, allows you to cross paths with, with people. And I'm, I am so eternally grateful to have crossed paths with my bishop. I honor him as my bishop. Um, under the under this region here, and he is my bishop, Bishop Broughton, Lady Lady Broughton. But there's a stronger word that I say that he is a friend and a brother. He's strong. He is a friend and a brother, and and he's 48, and I'm a little I'm a, I'm a year or two well, going on two years older than him. But he is my mentor, and he has helped me navigate this season in my life. And um, even even um, softly reminded me, and I think last time in a funny rebuke <laughs> of how to conduct some things that I was a little nerved about, and um, and I and I received that you are in a good place. And as I told y'all last time, I was I had I was speaking to my pastor, uh, Pastor Wallace, for about an hour and a half, two hours this week. We don't. Our schedules now, you know, we when we get our time, we get our time. And I was sharing the uh, the brave. The it's it's brave to leave your pulpit for a month. It's brave to leave your pulpit for a month. And even my pastor said, Andre, I should have, I probably should have done that myself. Sometimes it's brave. You are the better for it. You are the better for it. And I honor you. And I get to finish up. I get to finish up. I got it twice. Oh, man, you can't tell me nothing now. I got it twice. I got it twice. Not that there's not capable people here. Because I guarantee you I can toss this mic to a few people. And, um, and y'all can just take us in and take us to church. But I won't be before you long. I am practicing because football season is among us. And I am a football fan, and I ain't trying to be in church when kickoff start. I'm a Detroit Lions fan, so it ain't like we went in. So, you know, so even if I come to the third quarter, you know, at least I get to see them. They don't even play them here. If you will join me in the book of 2 Kings, um, 6 chapter, seven, um, 1 through 6, 6 chapter, 1, um, 1 through 7. If you would join me, 
Um, I don't know, you know, whatever your comfortable protocol is here, um, you may stand, sit, whatever you are comfortable doing, I am perfectly fine with it. I want to follow the protocol of this house. I'm excited about this, this one. Um, it says, and the sons of the prophets said unto Elijah, behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too strong too straight for us. Did I say anything? Y'all get it? Second Kings 6, 1 through uh, 7. Huh? Second Kings 6, 1 through 7. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't hear me right? Or did I say it wrong? I'm going to blame it on y'all. <laughs> I'll start over again. I apologize. Second Kings 6, 1 through 7. All right? And it says, The sons of the prophet said unto Elijah, Behold, now the place where we dwell in it, with thee is too straight for us, meaning it was too small. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take hence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they cut down the wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried, and he cut, and, and he cried, and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it hither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he said, Take it up, take, take it up to thee, and put out his hand, and took it up. This, as I was studying for this, since I, I've been knowing, uh, the title, if you need one, is Axe Heads Don't Float. Axe Heads Don't Float. Axe Heads Don't Float. Don't, don't put a punctuation on it because you'll, you'll figure out that why. One of the things that, 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 that intrigues me about this particular scripture and studying and this particular tale of Elijah, you have to know the relationship between Elijah and Elijah to really, to really understand what, what this, the, the relationship and who Elijah was. But one of the things about this particular miracle, I, I, uh, Bishop, I went through all commentaries and I, I, I pay all this money for one of these Bible study things and I use other notes and they said this is not a popular miracle this is this is this is not a popular incident in elijah's life it's 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 not widely discussed and i'm like how could it not be widely discussed because axe heads don't float see see it wasn't i feel i feel god already it it it, it wasn't popular in, in biblical tales but to, to, the, to the servant who, who, who needed that miracle, it was, it, was, it was important to him. Why was it important to him? You have to understand historical context. It's because there was a, there was a Mosaic law that governed this matter. Even, if the, even though it was an accident, if you borrow something according to the Mosaic law, if you look in the book of Exodus 21, it outlines all these laws and every rule. And man, it just makes you just shout for grace. It, it just makes you thank God for grace. But in, in the Exodus, in the Mosaic law, he, it, it was required that he paid it back. But it was only an ax head. But it's only an ax head to us because... Because we can go to Lowe's and, and Home Depot and, 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 and act, uh, somewhere and, and, and pick up an axe. It's common now. But, I, but as I studied the historical context, you had to make these. The, the, they didn't have machinery that mass produced. They didn't have, they didn't have it wasn't an industry that you can just run. They, they, wasn't, they, they were made and formed and fashioned. I feel God. So, so the law said, if you even if if you even if you lost it by a mistake or you damaged it, you had to pay it back. Well, much like some of us, if I had it, 
I wouldn't have to borrow it. If I, if I had what I need, I, I wouldn't have to borrow it. So, so some say these sons were, were, or the prophets were, they, they weren't wealthy. So, so imagine it, it, some of us got jokers who owe, who, who, who owe us $50 right now. They won't even come to the family reunion because they know they owe you 50. But they don't flex. They on Facebook, though. Flexing like. <laughs> Sorry, I'm thinking about my personal situation. I mean, man, if that dude posts one more picture with some sneakers on, I'm a boy. <laughs> This is a true story for me now. I'm like, but this is my, those niggas cost $800. I just need my 50 back. <laughs> so if it was a problem, if it wasn't a problem, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have panicked. He wouldn't have panicked like we panicked. So I started with the end in mind to, to, to let you paint so you can understand the panic mode of a servant who loses an axe head in the Jordan because axe heads don't float. So we're going to start back at the, at the beginning. I, 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 this is going to bless you. In, in our, in the, the first thing I enjoy or, or, or I gather or I not just enjoy it, but I, but I understood is as anointing as Elijah was, he was humble enough to hear his servant to say, would you come with us? And, and, and I don't bash church. I do not bash church. I don't bash Christians. I don't bash leaders. I, I just don't. I, I just don't. I, 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 I just, that's, that's just not my thing. But I've been around long enough to know that some people think they're too anointed to hang out with certain people. Some people think they too anointed to, to, to dwell with. You guys got a pastor who hangs out with y'all. You have leaders who, who don't mind sitting at the table and serving next to y'all. They don't come take selfies and leave. It, it, it shows that, that even that no matter how anointed you are, and, I, and not just your leaders, you. Because I'm going to show you you're anointed too. I promise you, when you walk away, you're going to realize whoever you are, where you are, there's an anointing on your life to do something. Watch. I promise you, I'm going to take you there. But in this situation, it shows the importance of relationship. Because the servant was able to talk to Elijah. There's some people that you don't, that's so anointed, they don't even, you got to talk to five people before you get to them. And I know it's a different time, and I know it's a, a different space, and, and, and I do recognize I'm a busy man myself. See, you heard I'm, while I'm ministering, I am a city councilman, and, and, and I, I get calls for cats stuck in trees to there's a pothole in my lawn, right? <laughs> so, so, so you get every call in the world, and you do have to manage that. But in this situation, there, there, I, I, I admire Elijah because he... Because obviously he has relationship. It's important in your life to have relationship with one, so with somebody who's more anointed than you, or you consider more anointed to you. We'll break that down. It's important, but it's also important in your life to have relationship with people who you. I know people who saved and won't go to the family reunion because they're too saved. I, I've known people who wouldn't go around their family because they don't want their anointing impacted at the cookout. At the cookout? You grew up with your cousin Shamika. She knew y'all when y'all was playing Bid, Wiss, and Tonk. Don't get new. Your anointing ain't your anointing, your anointing ain't your, on your life ain't that simple. If it's that simple to go, you need to spend more time with God. I'm almost done. 
I, I'm, believe it or not, I'm already on my fourth point. Elijah goes to a place. He agrees to go to a place, right? He agrees to go to a place, and he didn't even know that the, when he arrived, that, the, that his purpose, that there would be a purpose for him to be there. What am I saying? There are places that you're going to go intentionally and unintentionally. God's going to instruct you like he instructed Abraham. Go there and I'll show you the rest. Some of you are at places of employment and you don't understand why am I. You are, some of you in ministry and say, why am I. You in organizations and, 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 and I can vouch for the state sen- representative. You, were, uh, you ran, but every now and again, you were like, why? I could be, there's so much, I could be doing something else with my time, I promise you. Because the little, they just raised our little compensation, but what they pay you ain't. Right? Why am I here? Nine o'clock at night, arguing over a period in a in an ordinance, <laughs> right? Why am I here? Why am I at Living Grace? Where where? Why am I here? Something sometimes God doesn't tell you until you get there. Sometimes God can't tell you, and sometimes things just happen. But you're there to effectuate change. The anointing of your life is not to sit in a place and say, I'm going to wait till I'm called. Sometimes you have to trust God. Sometimes you have to trust God that when you show up, there has to be a purpose. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? So sometimes, so, so Abraham takes I, this is not even my notes. Abraham takes, takes Isaac up to sacrifice. But on his way, he says, we're coming back. I don't know. I know what God told me. I know what God promised me. But if I go there, there's a purpose there. There's provision there. And for you and for some of you, I don't care where you are, which your lot in life is. Sometimes you got to say, God, why am I here? I understand educators. I, God bless y'all. I spent a, a six months as a paraprofessional. Almost lost everything I had when I had the little boy in the air. I lie to you not, I promise you. I, I had the little boy in the air and I had to remember, I said, this is not my son. Because if he was my son, I'd have threw him across the room. Right? But they need love, I promise you, they need love. But I did have a little boy in the air. He, 12 years old, run up on me. I said, like, yeah, well, listen, I'm from, you know, I'm from Detroit, for real, for real, you know. Don't let the suit fool you, right? <laughs> but then I found myself praying for him. And by the time my time was over as a paraprofessional, I was doing some things and transitioning and wanted to explore other opportunities. I realized it probably not for me. <laughs> not now, not this season in my life. One of my friends, he left. Admit he, he, was, he was substitute. He left. He said, I, he said, Dre, I can't do this. Right? He said, I can't do this. So, so, so there are places that, that you're called that I can't function in. Because that's not the anointing on my life. The anointing on your life is significant to where you are. When Elijah shows up, he says, alas, master. Now, here's the interesting thing. He never rebuked. His, his disciple, Bishop, for saying, I done taught you this. You should have more faith than this. He never rebuked them. In the New Testament, we love Jesus Christ, but Christ rebuked his disciples. Right? When he says, you, this, 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 you done walked with me, you can't cast this one out? Oh, you a little faith? 
So, so there's a progression, but in this one, sometimes we have to understand, look, there's somebody going to be greater than me, but there's a time that when I go somewhere, I might be the greater one. It's not for me to rebuke. It's for me to set example. Some of you are there. You are purpose to change the outcome of, the, of whatever matter. Go to your family reunions. You know your family been beefing for 20 years over, over somebody who dead, who been dead 50 because they, the will. I'm telling you what I know. I'm not just babbling. Right? You, you beefing over an argument y'all had. Of, uh, so, listen, go with the anointing of God on your life. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but I feel prophetic. You, you got issues within family now. And it's your anointing that's going to make a difference. It's your, you are purpose to change the outcome in a certain situation. Elijah does this. And, and, and there's, there's, there's some deeper studies, Bishop. Elijah does this. He, he, he doesn't take the old axe head and throw it into the Jordan to cause the axe to flow. He breaks a new stick. And he, he breaks a new stick. He brings a new perspective. He brings a new investment. He brings a new mission. He, he adds something new to it. Sometimes you're there to add something new to a thing. You, 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 you are anointed to see something differently. You are anointed to do something differently. Right? You, uh, I, I, my, me personally, I was like, well, I didn't really study the Jordan on this one, but how deep was it? I know they baptized people in the Jordan, so how far could it go? Why didn't you just swim out there? Right? Why, why, why didn't you just walk? I didn't know. You know what I mean? I, I didn't study it. I, I should have, but I didn't. But, the, but, but I'm here to tell you that he threw a new stick. Some commentaries say it was representative of, of the cross being thrown in a burdensome situation to allow change to come, to allow grace to come. Where are the musicians at? I need them. All right. So, you asked me, did I have a song? I did. I just didn't want to tell y'all because this wasn't planned. I mean, it was planned, but I didn't want to tell you. That's why I didn't really answer your question. I'm a politician. I know how to say stuff without answering it, but then say something. Then I really didn't say it, but I didn't tell you that I didn't lie. I'm a politician. When I ran, I said I wasn't going to be a politician. I'm a street politician. I ain't going to lie. God bless you. Right. I'm going to show you the importance of your anointing. And I'm almost done. Watch this. Don't y'all say nothing. Y'all recognize? Y'all recognize the court? Y'all recognize it? Now, that's the keyboarders. Now add your part to that. Y'all getting happy. Watch this, watch this. Now the drummer's gonna add his part. No, 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 no. You, you're moving ahead of my sermon. You're moving ahead. There's always one. Cause, cause, you, cause you feel the anointing. It started with the keyboard, the basses, and now the drums. Now, do y'all recognize the song? Watch this. Now, go ahead. She done got happy over there. Now we gonna add some voices to it. Ready, ready, ready. So watch this. Going somewhere, watch this. You can't say that and not get happy. One more time, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I done got happy, hold on.
Sing it without clapping. She done got happy. I, she, she about to tell her. One day when I was lost, Jesus died upon the cross. I know it was the blood for me. So, what I was doing, I was giving you application of how the anointing works. He's anointed to play the keyboard, and it added to the atmosphere. And it changed the atmosphere a little bit. He's anointed to play the bass. And it added to the atmosphere. I feel my help coming. And it changed the atmosphere a little bit more. He's anointed to play the drums. And it changed the atmosphere a little bit more. Then you added your hands. The anointing in your hands. And it changed the atmosphere a little bit more. Then you added your voices and y'all got happy. So collectively together, collectively together, his anointing connected with your anointing, we, sh we shift the atmosphere. And we cause ax heads to float. We cause things to change. We cause circumstances to change. We don't cause laws to change righteously in the Senate and in the state. We, we, we don't have to lift up the kids because we... You're about to cause access to flow in situations. You're about to cause difficult things to be straight. You're about to make the difficult happen because your anointing matters. You just got to go there. Don't ask no questions. You just got to believe God. If he called me to this place, I'm here to change the atmosphere. I'm not here to be cute. I'm not here to doubt. I'm here to believe God that I'm anointed enough and I'm appointed enough and I'm called enough to... I told y'all I was going to take y'all. I don't want you to look at where you are ever again the same. I don't want you to doubt when God tells you to go somewhere. I won't call nobody out. Like I said, I don't do that. Because one prominent person says you can't listen to certain music. Then a video pops up. I'm old school, I can't do this new stuff they do. I'm, I'm an 80s, 90s baby, I was born in 70s. But, you know, then the video pops up. Can I, I'm just gonna confess. I ain't got nothing to lose, I ain't the pastor. I like line dancing. I'm gonna give you the same old two step with my Sprite in my hand, but I like it. But there's some places I go that I done led people to the Lord. Because I heard in the Bible say that Jesus was at the well. And, and, some, and the lady came and said, listen, he preached to her at the well. I'm going to let y'all go. I'll let y'all go. It's 11, 15. I'm past my time. Listen. The next thing he does, Elijah is humble enough to not even take credit for what happened. He don't even take credit for it. He tells him, you pick it up. It's yours. I'm just here to help. There are going to be things that happen that, you, that people are going to take credit for. But it's only going to happen because you're there. They know. Don't you be, dis be dismayed. This, just like this story says, it doesn't get a lot of credibility. Nobody really is written 
in heavenly places that you showed up and that you was there. So the next time you're somewhere and you done solved the matter, you tell them, yo, you pick it up. It's yours. I'm here for you. Not to make my name bigger. God got me. Not to make my name greater. God got me. Not to humiliate you. Because I could have picked it up and said, you, you could have done this. No, you, but I want to empower you. Look for, when, when you go out with the heart to empower other people, God strengthens you and brings people like, like he's brought Bishop into my life to, to strengthen me. No matter what. Regardless of everything I accomplish, I told my pastor, and I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm only a result of what you deposited in, in my life. And I'm going to pick it up. But in my heart of hearts, I know it was the anointing on your life, brother, that met me in a parking lot. You went over to gray and gave me wisdom. And I took that wisdom, and my life has never been the same. Why? Because you thought it not robbery to be there. You thought it not robbery, robbery, to, robbery to be there. You didn't even know you were going to prophesy to me that day. But you did. My life has never been the same. I prophesy to you that some of you are battling or right where you are. Some of you are battling, whether it's, whether it's a church or job or relationship, all those things. And all those things. I'm not going to tell you to go. I'm not telling you to go or stay. I'm not, I wouldn't do that. But I prophesy that I ask you to ask, when you ask God, why am I here? Reveal to me. He will. Point one. Point two. Do not negate the anointing on your life. I don't care where you are, who you are, what your title is, what your title ain't. Yes, I said ain't. Right? With your title ain't. You're anointed right where you are. You're called to make a difference. You're called to shift things. You're called to make axe heads flow. You're called to make the impossible possible. Right where you are. You are God's chosen. Who is battling with the question of am I in the right place? Maybe not church. You're battling that. God's going to reveal it to you. God's going to call you to awkward, unconventional places. But you're there to make access flow. Online, on a virtual service, listen, right where you are, you're going to make a difference. When you go to work tomorrow, look for the, look for the, look for the sunken axe head and be the answer to that problem. Ask God to give you the answer to that problem. That's my time. I, I, I will close, but I'm a, I'm, the bishop is here and I'll allow him to close. But thank you, living grace, and I hope you enjoyed your vacation, and thank you for your time. I'm gonna allow bishop to close out the service. And I'm gonna pray for you. All right, I pray for you. Is there one who says, you know what? I don't know. The altar's open. Maybe, you, maybe you're saved, but you say, you know what, God? I just, need, I just need to bring something to the altar. You can put your mask on or whatever. Maybe you're saved. I'll step back because I don't have one. We observe and protocol spread out. But maybe you just want to bring something to the altar. Maybe you're not saved. Or you know what? You're probably just not where you want to be with the Lord. The altar's open. Feel free to come. Nobody's going to hurt you or harm you. Feel free to come. And say, God, I need an answer. Of where I, why, I'm, why I am where I am. Listening to that, you driving in. I'm not 
not going to lay hands or anything of that nature. I don't want to do anything um, of that. But this is what my prayer. Daddy God, you see the needs and the servants and the hearts of these individuals who have came to the altar. Meet them here. You gave me it. You told me, Father God, that this was going to be a prophetic service. And I ask you, Father God, that you speak to each one of them individually. Lord, to the one who battles self-esteem issues and said that, mm-hmm, because the voice of somebody keeps telling them you'll never go anywhere, that so they stay stuck. Tell them that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Whoever it is, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. And God has called you to a new place. Trust him. To the one who wants to do something. But you keep looking at your resources. And the something you want to do is bigger than your checkbook. And it's bigger than your support system. Your current support system, may I say. I ask you, God. To give them a glimpse of open up their eyes if they take the first step. That the cattle, that the cat, the, the earth is the, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The cattle on the thousand, everything is yours. This is yours, God. And there's nothing lacking. And what you will promise you will be able to perform in their life. Hallelujah. To the one who said, I'm just stuck in unhealthy relationships. And I can't seem to shake myself. Because all my life they told me this is the best I could do. I'm stuck on this job. Because all my, I wasn't the smartest student. They caught, they, they, even, they even labeled you. They labeled you. And that label has haunted you. But God is saying, I behold, I do a new thing. God is notorious for changing your name to match your purpose. And in the spirit, I hear God, you may not change your natural name. But he's changing it in the spirit to match your purpose. He's changing in the spirit to match your purpose. And you say, God, you say, God, I, I would, but I'm struggling with this in my life. This addiction, this issue, this, this matter. I, I want to be more perfect to do your work. I, I want to be perfect. And I know I'm called, but God, I'm, I'm fighting this addiction. I'm fighting this thing in my life. And because of it, I feel unworthy. <laughs> the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You do the work of the Lord and watch him deliver. Watch him develop you and push you to your destiny. All together, I know we all are saved. I'm going to believe that. But I don't want to take anything for granted. Virtually. I feel in the spirit, virtually, someone saying, I wish I would have came there today. I wish I, I, need a, I need a word. I wish I was there so I could have a word. God is meeting you at the point of your knee right where you are. And here's what I hear. 
And this is not a physical pain, this is an emotional pain. That the emotional pain that you continue to struggle with, that keeps you from engaging people because you don't want to be hurt again. We break that. We break that spirit. We come against that. There are people who, who love you and people who need you to love them back. We break that. That emotional feeling of will I ever be loved again? And I'm not even talking about matrimony type. I'm just talking about people. Every relationship you have had, it felt like they either used you or abused you. So therefore, you want to stay to yourself. God didn't call you to that. You continue to love, and God's going to love you right back. All over the building, raise your hand and say, we just commit him in our life back to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, even myself. Thank you, Jesus, for being my personal Savior. Thank you for being my personal Savior. I believe that you died for me, washed away my sins, and resurrected. And I am saved, even online. Listen, that's my time. Hey, you're in a great place. You're in a great place. You may go, if you want, you may go back to your seats. But listen, living grace is a great place. Your pastor, your bishop will be back in the pulpit. So I don't know when I'm coming back. Maybe next August. <laughs> Maybe next August. But you guys have been gracious to me, and I appreciate you. I, we're praying for, for Lady Dawn. Get healed, sis. Oh, we coming over. You know we will. You know we will. And we love you. God bless you. God bless you. Bishop, are there any more announcements? I know you have to. We got to bless our children. Amen. Come on, I believe we can give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed this morning? Have you been empowered? Have you been encouraged? Have you been resurrected? Have you been restored? Amen. I truly believe that God sends a messenger our way. Amen. To remind us of his precepts and his principles of our lives. And he gives us the example, amen, that we must follow that you your life have purpose and your life is anointed amen so the bible says speak to things though they are even though that they're not and so you have the ability to call things amen into existence speak over speak over your family speak over your children life and death lies in the power of the tongue and you have to use the ability that god has given you through the word of god amen Amen. We want to bless these children. We want to bless any staff. We want to bless you all that as you return back into the classrooms, as they return on the school bus, as they get ready to transition back into education, we want to pray God's blessings and protection um, upon each and every one of our children, those that are here and those who are not here and those parents. Amen. Y'all need prayer as well. Amen, because, you know, the homework assignments is not the same. Amen. And I pray for y'all. Thank God I got grown children now because I would not have been able to survive. Amen. The stuff that y'all have to do. And so I'm praying for parents. And so parents, if you need to come and just receive some oil and a blessing, if your child is not here, but you're here and you want to receive, I'm going to ask you um, to come. I'm going to ask um, the elder Andre to come and stand with me um, as he will. These oils are made of frankincense and myrrh, the same oil that has been anointed of Jesus' body when he died. Mary and the other Mary has prepared frankincense and myrrh to go to anoint his body. Something that in the custom that they would do. But when they were arrived there, he was not there. Hallelujah. He was not there. He has already resurrected and rose. But this is a symbol. Amen. The Bible says, call on the elders to come and lay hands and anoint with oil. You are the elders of your household. 
Amen. Mothers, fathers, amen. You are the elders of your household, and it's your responsibility and obligation to anoint your children and lay hands on them and pray God's blessing and covering. So as you hold this box, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray over each vial of oil that, God, that the families that receive this, that they will anoint to protect their children as these teachers return into the classroom. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus, your protection, that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper. Father, we're praying that laws will change to protect our children, protect our staff and our teachers, that schools will be a safe place. Father, we pray, God, that prayer will enter back into the schools because, God, when they removed the prayer from the school, all hell broke loose. And so, God, we pray your protection upon the principal, the vice principal, the resource officers, the teachers from kindergarten all the way through college. We pray, God, over these students from preschool to daycare, to first grade, to 12th grade, to college, God, on every level of education, those that are returning back to school as adults online or even in the classroom. God, give them wisdom that surpass their own understanding. Open up their mindset and give them the strength that they need for continued education. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to bless the kids. I want to put the oil in the parents' hands. So parents, if you're here, come quickly. Come quickly. Come quickly. Yeah, I'm going to bless the parents first. Just pray your protection in the name of the Father, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We pray your protection now. In Jesus' name, we pray protection now. And I want to wish everyone a very exciting school year for staff and for students as you return back into the classroom. Amen. Amen. How many know we worship our Lord in our giving? Amen. As we prepare our hearts and our minds to give unto the Lord on this morning, give us about 10 more minutes. We'll be out of here or have you on your way. But we want to prepare our offering, our seed unto the Lord. Amen. That God has given unto us and we give back unto him. Our ushers and our greeters are preparing themselves to come. Sister Gwyn, she has our electronic device. I want to ask you to sow into good ground. Support Living Grace Worship Cathedral. We're doing the work. We're doing missions. We're doing ministry. We're, we're making a difference in our state and our community. We need your support online. They will give you some ways of how you can give electronically through Cash App, through PayPal. 
You can mail it in or you can give physically. Amen. In the house of the Lord. Amen. God loves a what? Cheerful giver. Let's give unto the Lord this morning. Yesterday morning, I want to thank our leaders who came out to participate and witness. Amen. The water baptism will have all of your documentation, your certificate, and present to you on next Sunday. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, um, if you want to see me regarding a child, amen, I'll be out in the foyer. It only will take a few minutes. Just come and receive that from me and let and I can uh, gather the information. One thing that we did forget, and it's only going to take about one or two minutes of your time, was our video presentation announcement. And the reason being it's important because we're transitioning from Facebook to now YouTube permanently. Facebook has so many different types of restrictions and can't do this and can't do that. And we want to be free in the spirit. And we want to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ is not compromised um, and in our delivery. And so we're going to be moving permanently those who are online we will be moving permanently in the beginning of next month to youtube and so our morning announcement is going to tell you how to follow and connect with us and after that we'll have our benediction living grace worship cathedral's live stream is transitioning to youtube here are a few simple and easy steps to help you to subscribe to our channel and prepare you for the transition. First, on your computer or mobile device, open your browser and go to youtube.com. Then in the search bar, type in Living Grace Worship Cathedral. This can also be done in your YouTube app on your mobile device as well. After typing in our name, click the search bar. After clicking the search button, you will see Living Grace Worship Cathedral in the search results. Go on over and click subscribe. Also, don't forget to turn on notifications. That way you can be notified anytime we post new content or go live. If you are having any technical issues, please see Youth Pastor Siandri Gosa at the end of service. Thank you. United Covenant Churches of Christ, Ghana, West Africa presents, Behold, I Do a New Thing international pastors ministers and church leaders conference which will be held september 28th through september 30th see this flyer for more details thank you living grace worship cathedral is starting a first sunday choir if you're interested in joining please sign up at the registration desk which is located at the entrance of the building for any other questions please see elder linda larue thank you join us for prayer monday through fridays at 12 p.m the dial-in number is 716-427-1359 and the access code is 625-910. Also, join us for Back to the Altar Prayer every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. here at Living Grace Worship Cathedral and on Facebook Live. We hope to see each and every one of you there. 
Just as a friendly reminder, there will be no Wednesday night recharge for the adults as well as the teens and millennials for the month of August. Recharges will resume the first Wednesday in September. Thank you. Through the Bible Thursday. Join Pastor Tim in the Living Grace Worship Cathedral New England campus every Thursday night at 7 p.m. for Bible study, which will be held in person and online via Facebook and YouTube. We hope to see you there. Calling all married, engaged, and dating couples. Come join the LGWC Marriage Ministry Date Night End of Summer Kickoff, which will be held Friday, September 16th at 7.30 p.m. here at Living Grace Worship Cathedral. Invite other couples. The couple who invites the most visiting couples wins an amazing prize. Be sure to sign up on the Google link coming to your email soon. We hope to see you all there. Thank you all for your attention and please govern yourselves accordingly. God bless. When I was eight years old, my father was taken away from us. And by that, I mean he was murdered. Nothing was the same for me. News began to come to our doorstep. From our landlord, we got word that we couldn't stay in the house that we stayed anymore because we couldn't afford it. My mother had no job. My father was the only breadwinner. We moved from where we stayed to a place called Naguru Kasenke, which is one of Uganda's largest slums. And then I was introduced to our new home which was a 12 by 12 room. I looked up on the roof, it was a tin roof that had holes in it. I've been to places where when it rains, people are happy, they get excited. But for me growing up, whenever it rained, that was a night that would stay standing. Get little buckets, place just where the holes in the roof are and wait until morning. A reality hit me that day. This was life. I remember when my mom said to us, there was no money for food. That ushered us into a place where we were now going to begin to go to the street to fend for food. Hunger began to set in, lack of water. I was a kid, I, I didn't have time to be a child anymore. As I lived like this on a daily basis, poverty began to speak to me as a child. I felt I was nothing. I didn't matter. Nobody cared to know my name. I think the best way I could describe who I was and what I thought is the word hopeless. My mother in tears uh, approached one of her friends just to share with her friend and her friend shared with her about compassion. Compassion staff members immediately came to our home. Uh, I remember them coming with uh, just uh, files to, to, to get details of who we were, what our story was. I got the news that a young lady, Heather, she was 15 years old, a teenager. She had decided to sponsor me. I cannot find the words to describe the joy that filled our home when we got the news. Richmond, you've got a sponsor, which means you can now go back to school. It means food will be given to us because of you. I began to walk into that reality that ushered in me an opportunity to rekindle this hope that was taken away. Heather began to write to me, to hear words like, Richmond, I love you. Richmond, I'm praying for you. They began to bring healing into places that were destroyed by voices and poverty and my self-image. I remember my day, June the 3rd, 1996. I walked forward to accept the Lord Jesus in my heart. I began to feel, wow, I have been released from poverty. I have been released. God began to continue to grow the leadership within me. And then I felt fully called to pursue pastoral ministry. 
I began the Pastors Discipleship Network, a ministry that exists to train and equip pastors. And I spend a lot of my life training and equipping pastors in the Word of God. Looking back into my life and thinking where I am right now and what I'm doing, I don't think any of this would have been possible without compassion. Compassion works. Everything that was placed within the program has helped build me to who I am right now. Poverty is not just the lack of money, the lack of material, food and water. Poverty is in, it's deep. I credit a lot of how I feel now about myself to those letters that I received from my sponsor. My name is Richmond Wandera, and I was released from poverty in Jesus' name. works. I was able to take Elder Linda and Deacon Wanda with me on one trip to, to Africa and as we ministered to families out there they were able to witness um, the struggle of poverty across this world and so that's just some information we wanted to share with you if you feel led and compelled. You may not have it right now and it's okay. We're going to continue to do this and support uh, families locally and internationally because we know we need compassion right here in our own community as well. Amen? Amen, amen. Trey, did you want to come? Because we'll just say hello. You okay? Okay. You sure? Okay. okay. All right, all right. Well, listen, um, she's here, so please stop by and uh, introduce yourself to her. Let her know where you live. And um, she has a heart to serve and an ear um, to hear. And so just share some of your thoughts and what you're thinking and how we can be continue to be impactful uh, on a state level and uh, we thank God for our councilman, amen, Andre amen, and if anyone lives down in that Dover area, get in his ear and tell him about your cat and your pothole and the trash and everything so he can, you know, and if he ain't doing it, let me know, amen I'll make sure that he do what he's supposed to do but he blessed us this morning I want to thank God for him Amen. Closing out my vacation. Amen. With a powerful word. Listen, all hearts and minds are set. Amen. Mama say you don't got to go home, but you got to get Tracy. We thank God for your daughter. We're praying for her. Amen. Tracy said her daughter was in a, a motor vehicle accident on this week and the Lord comforted her. Amen. The prayers of the righteous avail as much and we thank God. Amen. This is her next to you. Amen. Honey, we thank God that God's protection, that we're looking at, like, come on, y'all can do better than that. This ain't a memorial service. This is not a funeral, but to God be the glory. God's hand was on her. Y'all should have saw this car. And when you see this car, you will only know it was the grace of God. Amen. And we thank God's protection and healing upon you. We pray for you. Let us stand. Amen. Thank you all for worshiping with us. We look forward to seeing you on next uh, Sunday for Communion Sunday. Thank you, Councilman, Elder, Brother, Friend, Man of God, for that word for the people of God. Thank you, uh, State Representative, for being here. Uh, more. Amen. This is your home. You're always welcome here. Our doors are always open. And anything that Living Grace can do and I can do to help further you along, you know, just pick up the phone. You know I got you. Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We thank you for those who are viewed online and those who are present and even those who are absent. Go with us, God. Remind us that we have purpose in this kingdom that acts heads and can't flow. And so, God, we thank you, God, for the manservant, God, who has spoken, ministered to our heart. We thank you for the children that we have blessed and consecrated and the staff and the parents of those who are returning back into the classroom. Cover them, keep them in perfect peace as our mind stays on you until we meet again cover us lord and we thank you in advance for all good things and all god's children say let the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight oh lord my strength and my redeemer god bless you go in peace and remember the joy of the lord is your strength